So I can post them for you guys to watch yesterday or watch tomorrow or later today. You get what I'm saying. These are all loaded to the YouTube channel. I, yesterday's is uploaded. I had it up by the end of the day yesterday. So today we're talking about contacts. So we're gonna be progressively working, walking through, right? All of the command applets over the next eight days, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. over the next two weeks. And then we'll repeat again every two weeks. So every day it will be the same session with a little bit more information, different instructors, different trainers, which is cool because you get to hear how we do things a little bit differently. But you're stuck with me to start. So we're going to talk about contacts leading off here, okay? We're going to talk about importing contacts. We're going to talk about adding an individual contact. There's some differences between a, a CSV file that we have in command or CSV files that we may have from somewhere else, right? And we know that we touched on yesterday that Scott Lurie Marketing, scottlurymarketing.com, right? is, an, is a, uh, a value add that your mark centers provide to you to help you import your contacts, right? It's a time save. So if you go to scottlorymarketing.com and log in, your login will be your market center number. If you don't know your market center number, ask somebody in your market center. Ask your market center tech trainer, ask your ASC, ask your DFI. I will tell you it is, it's a KW number. It's not your brokerage number for the MLS, just, just for clarity. Uh, there's a difference between Excel spreadsheet and Apple number spreadsheet. And I called on Andy earlier, but Andy Stevens learned firsthand that Apple can be quite difficult, right? Am I right, Andy? That's your excuse for everything, David. It is. Apple is the bait of my existence. I, I, I cannot tell a lie. But you told me Apple was very difficult when trying to use their numbers platform instead of using Excel. So Excel is your friend here. Okay, so we're going to get you in the right format so that you can upload this documentation. We're also going to talk about when you're importing context, the value of what 100% means, right? We talk, you hear us talk about 100% contacts here, 100% profiles for yourself. When we do things for you and your behalf, we're gamifying the system a little bit, right? We want you to understand, we want you to achieve a certain status for yourself. And they have determined that 100% and what makes up 100%, right, is important in your relationship with the people in your data bank. Right, so to understand, and we'll, we'll see what this looks like, but jot this down. In order to get 100% for a contact, okay, you get 20 points each, name, that's easy, right? It's kind of like an SAT score. You get 20 points for your name. Email address, phone number, okay, and home address. Each of those 20 points gets you 80%. So they're the, they're the important items, right? There's different ways you can go about and getting things, but the most important way and the best way is what? How do you think the best way to get any or all this contact information is? First person to chime in, hold that space bar down. Uh, uh, sign in sheet at a uh, open house. Sign in sheet at an open house. That's good one, Fred. Ask the prospect. That doesn't sound like Fred. No, that Ask was the prospect. Facebook. Facebook. Those are all right, but the best way is to pick up the phone and ask, right? Have those conversations, right? Yeah, there's cheats. You can go to Facebook, go there, go to tax records. Some of those things are time savers sometimes, but I encourage you all, pick up the phone and talk to people. That's the value. And when you have this information, the more information you have about people in your sphere, right, then your database has real substantive value. Some of those other things is we talk to them and how to utilize them, there's real value in carrying some of those conversations. Facebook is a great way to look at that. So we'll touch on that in a little bit. But so that's 80%, name, email, address, and phone, okay? Now there's an additional 20% that you get to pick up, four percentage points each. So when you add contacts to your contact record and you tag them, and we're talking about tags, we're gonna lead off with tags. Putting them in the buckets, that's what tags are, right? How do we categorize people in our data bank? Social, do I have a social connection with them? And I will tell you now, if you don't have a Facebook page, you're wrong. I'm sorry, I know a lot of us are old school. I'm almost 50, okay? I get it. You need to be on Facebook. Facebook is your backup database. It's probably your largest database, if I had to guess for most of you, right? Show of hands, who has more than a thousand friends on Facebook? You see those hands, put them in front of your cameras, put them in front of your face, let me see them. Come on, Lynn, I know you do. I will call you out. 
Now, for those of you that had a thousand Facebook friends, how many of you also have a, a thousand people in your, or less than a thousand people in your database? I bet you do. Some of you may be higher, but I bet you some of you have more friends on Facebook than you do in your command database right now. Patricia, am I right? So Facebook is a database for you to harvest. And it's okay that all those people, right, are local. I mentioned yesterday that, and we're gonna to touch on this at the end of next week, we're the largest real estate referral company in the world. Where do those referrals come from? And people you know that live around the country, around the world that you're probably friends with on Facebook. So those relationships are incredibly important. So tags, social connection, right? Because you connect their Facebook account, their Instagram account, different accounts to their contact record. And all it is is a quick link at this point, but it's a great way if you're calling somebody where you can kind of click on their Facebook page real quick, see what they're doing because, you know, people are very private, right? They never share anything openly, right? That never happens. But Facebook, right? They share everything. So if you're not sure what to say to somebody, if you're their Facebook record first before you make a call, you may get some insight in and that you weren't up to speed yet. Maybe they had a kid, maybe they moved, maybe they got a new job, right? Maybe they're great enjoying the snow. Who knows what's going on in their lives if you haven't talked to them? Use Facebook be a guide for you as you're having your personal questions, right? Because get them talking. Do you know what questions to ask to get them talking? Right? Don't be like, hey, I saw on Facebook. I mean, you can do that to a degree. But ask appropriate probing questions and let the social media channels be your guide to help you steer you in the right direction of those conversations with your consumers. Lead source, where did they come from? How did you connect with them? Was it an open house? Were they your sphere of influence? Did they come from a Facebook lead? Lead sources are a huge list of lead sources in Facebook, or I'm sorry, inside a command to help you identify where did these people come from? Because a lot of our business is tracking and knowing our numbers. Right. So as you start to filter, tags are one thing. But if you look at the additional thing, I see a lot of times people build tags and they replicate tags because they don't understand that there's some pre-built tags, which we'll touch on because you guys have all read the red book, right? Everybody read this? Most of you? If not, get crack lacking, right? Command is built around the platform of everything that Gary and Jay built into the red book. So when we talk about buyers, sellers, past clients, vendors, right, agents, those tags are default in the system for you to leverage already. You don't need to recreate those. They're already there for you, right? So custom tags are for everything else. Church, school, little league, the daily two calls, right? Hometowns, high school, college. There's no wrong answer and there's no limit to what that might look like for you. Job, where do they work? It's important to know where somebody works. Right, what if they work for Amazon? Is there value in knowing somebody works for Amazon? Maybe. I think they're moving here. I read that somewhere. Maybe, maybe it was on Facebook. Not sure. So knowing where they work is important, right? Relocation, incoming and outgoing tells a story. And what's their birthday? I'm going to tell you something about birthdays. Nobody's calling these people anymore. Their grandmothers are not calling them anymore. Think about that for a minute, right? They didn't get cars from grandma. I'm like, I used to look forward to, I still have one, which is, which is good. I, I used to get birthday cards for a dollar for every one of my birthdays, right? I don't get that anymore. I well, got expensive after I turned 21, but I mean, geez, I mean, come on. Now grandma's hopping online and saying happy birthday to me on Facebook. So they don't call me anymore. You have the ability to be a different to, to establish those relationship. And I joke about Facebook a lot. But there's real value in that. So I joined Facebook in 2007, like many of you, right? And my first foray into Facebook, I was a little bit more private than I am now about the information that I share, right? My wife was in security and she was very conscious about how much information we shared openly. So one year went past and I had a bogus birthday, January 1st, or something like that, July 1st, December 25th, right? Those are all should be triggers for you, by the way, to... Okay, look a little deeper on somebody's birthday. The next year, Facebook had my actual birthday. Now, well, some of you have heard me tell this story before, so don't cheat. How did Facebook know what my actual birthday was after year one? Anybody know? <coughs> don't, don't overthink the answer. Hold the space bar down and share. Nobody. 
people told you happy birthday on your birthday? Well, people told me, people, but they, how did they know it was my birthday? From the year before. Or if, if I had put a bogus birthday in originally, how did Facebook have my new real birthday? They know did everything. You, did you post birthday information up there? What was that? Did you post like celebration info up there? Close. I'm vain. I want people to say happy birthday to me. So I updated my Facebook profile with my actual birthday because a year went by and people weren't saying happy birthday to me. You guys, you guys don't hear what I'm You guys know what I'm talking about. We all want to be told happy birthday on our actual birthday, right? I'm going to say 99% of you want to be told happy birthday on your birthday. And when you put bogus information out there, unless they know it's your birthday, it gets missed. So I went into Facebook and I changed it. And the reason I tell you this, because I get this question all the time, because Facebook now has most of the people that you're friends with under, if you go to category under events, all those birthdays are listed out for the entire calendar year. It's not Facebook class. I'm not going to delve into that, but I'm telling you it's there. Now, all of those birthdays, I'm going to guess 90 to 95% of them are accurate for the same reason that I just told you that mine is accurate. I want people to say happy birthday to me. We're human. It's true. Now, if you're not sure, okay, and somebody says their birthday is February 14th, and you don't have the best relationship with me, wait. See people react. See people post on their business page, right? And then you confirm. Wait for their grandma to say happy birthday. That's validation. <clears throat> going for every year going forward, you're going to have real information about them. So trust but verify on Facebook. Their birthday's on the first of the month, the last of the month, the holiday, New Year. Question that, right? I've got friends that are on Christmas, but that's a smaller number. Trust but verify. But every week, you could be literally going through your friends list, okay, looking at birthdays and adding those birthdays each week to your contact records. And within a year's time, you're gonna have most of the birthdays from Facebook to those contact records. So that's a long-winded story that I think there's value in you guys understanding and knowing. So we're gonna kind of jump into that. No, okay. My son likes to come in. We talked about this yesterday. He doesn't care what I'm doing, which is okay. All right, so let me jump in here. I'm going to minimize the screen a little bit. All right. I'm going to do, uh, you guys seeing the screen okay now? You see I brought up command? Thumbs up? Yes? All right, rocking and rolling. So yesterday we covered command and what these applets were. Today we're going to, Dylan, I'm teaching, buddy. Thanks. Today we're going to talk contacts. So the contacts is on the left. In order to have context, we're going to bring context in. So we'll talk a little bit about that, right? Across the top, you're going to see import and add contact. So if you click the import button, the screen pops up. And then there's a teal blue, depending on what your color scheme is and that you see. Mine changes daily, I think. There's a download button. If you click that download button, it's going to download an Excel CVS file for you. Okay. This is the file that you use. If you're migrating from another platform, your CSV file from that other platform is not uploadable to command. So you have to copy and paste first name, last name, address, birthday, phone number into the appropriate columns. And I'll bring this over here if I can grab it real quick for you guys. Okay, you seen the spreadsheet now? Okay, good. So this is the CSV file that's provided to you by command. And you see it across the top, first name, middle name, last name. Fill these in or copy and paste the appropriate fields into these columns. Do not delete any of these headers because mapping takes place when you end up bringing this into the platform that if, without it, It'll send something squirrely and it won't match up and kind of screw up your database. So whether or not you have information in any one of these rows, you're like me, I like to be clean. Let it be. Please don't update it, okay? Work your way across for all your contacts. Give it as much information as you can, especially if you're starting from scratch, okay? Because the more information that you load the first time, the better off that 100% you get to without having to add additional information. 
Now here, I will tell you, and I get this question all the time, so I'll, I'll preemptively strike you on this one. You can't rerun this once you've loaded people into your database. Okay, if there is a, that email already exists, if that phone number already exists, that, air, that new file will not load. If you upload somebody without an email or a phone number and then you do it again, it'll create a secondary record because you recognize people have different, same names, different people, right? Dave Donaldson is not an incredibly unique name. There are other Dave Donaldsons in the world. And if I didn't put an email address or a phone number when I uploaded my name the first time, and I try to do it a second time, it'll just create a second contact record. So at this time, they're working on there is no merge contacts. So I'm just kind of laying that out there. It's what's there for you right now. Okay. Phone numbers, email address, and you'll see that there's primary, secondary, home, multiple addresses, because we recognize that people own multiple properties. Mailing address is different from primary address because that may vary. It's important. There's that they added this label here. So home, if this is their home address, their primary address, home is what you want to put in there. If it's work, put work. Okay. Investment, put investment. We need something in that field at this point. I'm just going to kind of scroll across and come to some other important fields you need to know about. This stage is important, right? There's captured, qualified, or connected. You're just defining that role of that person that you're bringing in. You're qualified. Are they qualified to buy a property? I don't know. Captured, which means they came from somewhere that they're probably a lead, which means it's a one-way relationship. I haven't established a, a relationship with them yet. So they, I might just have captured their information, either from an open house or from a website or from somewhere, right? But I don't have that one. We haven't had a two-way conversation about representation or helping them find or sell a house yet. Connected means we have a relationship, right? I, I'm your go-to guy. We have a history together. We're good. Maybe friends on Facebook. No, that doesn't define everything, right? System tags. That's what we talked about. These are default tags that are in the system for you. Buyer, seller, bought, sold, agent, KW agent, right? Because there's a difference. And you may have agents in your database from a relationship standpoint, right? Allied resource, right? Are they a vendor of yours that refers you business, right? Are they talent, right? Maybe somebody you're going to eventually hire, Right, because we always have to be building our bench if we're growing our businesses, which you all are business owners, right? Or they're a referral partner. You know, they another agent in another city that I send business to. And are they in my downline? Right? They're a KW agent. Are they in my downline? Maybe, maybe not. So all you do in these fields is you put the letter Y if any of these apply. Don't put no, just put yes if any of the custom system tags. Applies and you see that tells you right off the top here. Then we have custom tags. We're going to talk about building custom tags. Custom tags allows us to tag people in the database for those additional items that we've created. Now you can add a custom tag directly here and it will create a custom tag for you inside a command. I don't recommend that you do that. I recommend that you are structured and organized and you build your tags first so everything's the same because tags are case sensitive. You see that I'm using TJ here as an example because that is their last name. And I'm going to add them to the daily two tag inside of my system. That's what I have in there, even this is a demo account. But if I went in here and I put T and J, that's lowercase. That would actually create a different tag inside the system. And then I would have duplicate tags, meaning the same thing, and start to run amok in my database. So I do recommend that you build them clean first. Maybe print out a list so that as you're adding contacts to the import from you, right, you utilize the correct tags. It's just my recommendation for all of you. Notes. You can add up to 2,500 characters worth of notes, and it'll import that information in the command for you. If you have more than that, you're going to have to cut and paste into the contact record through you know through your documents going forward but 2500 is the character limit on the import source we talked about that where do they come from are they sphere of influence are they from facebook are they from open house this that lead source list is inside a command and the context you can see those and you can apply those when you on the import at the very end you've got social media so you can literally go to their facebook page copy their domain from facebook Right, you see, I gave an example of mine here. 
and paste it into this field. And what that does, it connects a connector between command and a hot link that will bounce directly to that page. It doesn't read that page. It doesn't do anything like that, but it's just a quick direct that you don't have to go looking for to search them. It's a time save. And you can do it for Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Plus, which is dead, uh, Pinterest, Instagram, and House. Inside a command, you'll see additional drop downs, but this is what's built in under the import form. That's what's available to you on the import form. You cannot add custom tiles, custom tiles. You cannot customize this document in any way. Any questions for anybody around that document? Is there anything in chat, Jerry, Kyle, Tad, anything I need to address at this point that got asked around that import there, form? There was literally just one question that just popped up. It's why during the import do you get multiple notes records for each line of notes? I can edit and delete the notes in command. However, then the timeline shows the deleted notes. I, I, I'm sorry, why do you get, so it's repeating the note that you put in multiple times? I believe that's what it's saying. Why during the import? No, it's, it's not repeating it. It's like if I had a multi-line note, okay. it, it put each line as a note record. So then when I go in to clean it up, I can put them into a single note and delete the extra ones. But then the timeline shows you deleted this note, you deleted it. So it's still just gotcha. as messy. I see what you're saying. Um, what I would do is get with your market center tech trainer and turn out they should not be working that way. Um, to make sure that we turn to submit a ticket on that so they can clean that up on the import form. This is this import form is new. Um, sometimes when we roll up things, we have bugs and issues, right? Um, so it should bulk load them one time. It shouldn't create each line as its individual note, as you're saying. So we do want to get that turned in. That's, okay. not, a, that's not a deliberate item. Okay. Do you know if there's a way to, when you delete stuff for that? So the, the timeline on the command, uh, on the contact record is look, it appears to me as like a log record of everything you do to it. That's so correct. Can you, can you hide? So when I clean it up and I delete stuff, I don't want to see that in that timeline anymore. You could filter like right now. Cause so you're seeing your on your timeline. We'll, we'll jump to that. But just a quick answer is this. You're looking at all activity. There is a filter dropped on that. You can say, Hey, just show me email activity or show me call activity or show me SMS activity. Yeah. You but that's still not going to filter out those deleted notes. They'll be so hidden. They will, they'll be hidden. All right. So that's the way that it functions right now. Unfortunately. So okay, you're not gonna you. you're not gonna be able to delete that. Okay, thanks. Perfect. All right, so we talked about those import forms and house scores. So let's take a look at the actual contact record now. So let's go back. All right. Now, when you import a contact, right, they'll come in. They, depending on the amount of contacts on your import form, determines how quickly they load. Right. If you got 10 or 15 or 20, it's going to happen pretty quick. If you're trying to import 5,000, it's going to take a little bit of time. So like anything, I will tell you, maybe do a batch of 10 just to test it out so you can see what it looks like. Right? Don't do 5,000 at one drop. Give it a test so you can say, hey, is this coming the way that I want? Did I do things the right way? Always test. This best practice or reckon, recommendation for me. Under When you do import something, sorry, at the top here, you're going to have the little bell. The bell will have a dot, and then your import log will say that we imported all contacts successfully, or if there was 10, we'll just use that example, we imported eight of 10, of 10 contacts, and then there'll be an error file. So you can actually go in to see what was wrong. Why didn't those contacts import? So you actually go into settings. Right here, command settings, import logs my logs, you can actually go in and look at the download file that came in. And then there's an error file if there was an error associated with it, okay? And then you would download that Excel spreadsheet and it would actually tell you in that error format what was wrong. Duplicate email, duplicate phone number, the characters wrong, maybe you posted in some wrong, you know, we've all seen the numbers start to change from uh, numbers to like the ECU or something like that. There was an error on that import form. You can go back, clean that on, and update that individual person that was missed. So 
So this is where you find out that information. And a lot of people don't do not know that this exists. Now, if they um, don't upload because of an email duplicate, I mean, somebody else is associated with it, right? So you cannot have a husband and wife have the same email address. They have to have different email addresses in the platform. So you can't upload david at gmail.com for both husband and wife. Just a point of clarification. All right. So as I walk you through this home screen here, we co we covered import. We're gonna go we're gonna go in and add a contact in a minute, but I want to also show you that there's this export button here. These three dots. I can export all contacts. I can export mailing labels, and I can export mailing labels into a PDF. So those options are there for you as well. At this point in time, they're still working on a couple of things there too. When you export a husband and wife, they're not merging them. I understand in one field. They may you may see them as two different contacts. And in order for everybody to show up on a mailing label, there's a box on your contact record that the primary address has to be checked as this is also my mailing address. And if that's not checked, you won't see them on the mailing list label. There is no bulk option at this point to check all. So you have to do that contact by contact. Just, you know, don't shoot the message, just kind of letting you know that's how that works right now. All right. So when I look at this screen, a couple of things I want to highlight. This navigation bar is customizable. Like many things inside a command, I can customize my display. Customize columns allows me to modify how things are sorted on my home screen. Right? So I go to customize columns, just like I say, I see things on the left and I'll see things on the right. If I add something, like I like to add this created, I like to know when files are created. That works for me from an organizational structure. When did they get added in my database? It tells me a lot of things, especially if I'm filtering out by Facebook leads and things like that. So I like to have this created, added to my display. Now, when I do that, it's gonna show up on the right-hand side as I scroll into the bottom, at the bottom. But I just said, I like to see it first. So this top to bottom is the same as left to right. So I grab this created and I bring it all the way up to the top. I put that there. Last contacted is when did I send them an email last? When did I call them last? When did I text them last? Any type of reach out is a contact. Last visited means when did they last come to my website, utilize my mobile app, or open up an email that drove them to my neighborhood, my monthly neighborhood nurture or some sort of activity that sent them to my platform. So that's last visited. Tags, stage will apply to opportunities. We'll talk about that on the opportunities. Phone number, email address. Maybe some of these things you don't want on the home screen. So I'll turn those off. Maybe I don't want to know when I last updated my contact record. I think it's good if you run a team, but if you're an individual agent, you may or may not. This is all personal, right? It's all personal to you. All right, so I just turned a couple of things off. Then I hit apply. You see, instantly my home screen changed. Created is there on the left, last contact. I shuffled things around a little bit, so that's what I'm seeing. Then something just still out of view, all the way over here. Owner and assignee even though you'll see it as an individual agent, you will be the owner. On a team, you may be the owner or you may be the assignee. So that's what this really is coming into play for is for agents that are on teams. Because you could own a contact as a Rainmaker and assign it to somebody on your team. Or maybe a team contact and assign it to somebody else. So this, this applies to teams. So as an individual agent, I might turn those columns off under here. I don't need them because I'm a solo agent. So I'm always the owner and always the assignee. Oop, gone. All right. So now when I did those things, oh, click too fast. This is actually good. You saw that I clicked off that screen, right? So now when I come back to my screen, those changes did not save. Why did that happen? Because I didn't save it, right? Because sometimes your filter customizing and shuffling the cards or the deck is a one-off for you. If I, if I want it to be saved, then I have to, okay, I have to say, all right, great. I wanted my contact, I want these two off. I'm just gonna rechange them real quick and show you. It's contacted, all right, apply. 
When I do this, I now get this blue green button. Would I like to save these changes? If I click save that change, now every time I log in, that's how I'm gonna see my screen. And the reason I do that is because sometimes you're filtering things or looking things at a one-time view and you have to click those save. So any make, anytime you make a change, it'll ask you, would you like to save this so this now becomes your default settings for this screen, right? Also, something I wanna show you is over here, is this one of 10. You now have the sort ability to shuffle those deeper all the way up to 500. I can see up to 500 people. Like this was a pain threshold for a lot of people for a long time because you were only seeing one of 10 on your screen and you had to toggle to the next page to the next page. Uh, this about two months ago now, this changed. So you can now see on one screen up to 500 contacts. And then when I do that, you saw my blue button came back in, save changes. So that is my custom default on this screen. Hey, David, we had a question um, about your tag. Uh, what does H and V stand for? Uh, we're going to jump into that. That's a great question, but those are for daily twos. I'm going to go into custom tags okay. right now. I'd like to, can I add one little thing? Um, Absolutely. It's, it, it's a little bit of a jump back from where you were a second ago, but the three dots on the right-hand side where you've got the export. Okay, if you click on that and you see that you can export these as a CD, CSV or a PDF, one thing that, that I've had a lot of people in my office uh, that we've talked about is sometimes you don't wanna export your whole database. You only want five people. If you only want five people, click, say you click the five names, Charlie Brown, Linus, Lucy, only those five names. And then, yep, you go right there and it's down to the export to PDF a little bit lower, right there. That's where you do just five or 10 names versus your whole database. And, and that's something that I know a lot of people when they're going through uh, uh, thinking about their database and how they're gonna touch those people with mailers, this is one thing that they've had a little bit of trouble with. It's not in the exact same place. You're spot on and thanks for bringing that up. And you'll notice that this bulk activity, that's not just for that, right? There's a lot of things you can, you can add notes to all these people. I could bulk tag all them at the same time, right? If these were all HV, right? Uh, I can mark them as leads, right? So leads, if I click mark as leads, mark, they're now going to be showed up with these green dots. So leads, it's a it's a differential between contact and lead is this, a one-way conversation, right? Have I gotten their information? Therefore, but we haven't really spoken or established a relationship. So there's still, I might just mark them just as a lead. If they're a contact, that means we've talked, we know a two-way conversation, we know who we are. They know who I am. So there's lots of different functions that when you start to do things, things open up. So like when I, as soon as I start checking, I now have this bulk action. Bulk action is not there unless I start checking multiple people. All right. So good points there from Jerry. Now I talked about customizing columns. There's also these two display buttons there that you can change how your screen looks for you. I like in this list mode that works for me, but you can go to tiles. Now, next to search, you can search by last name, or I always leave it on everything, but you can always search by email address, right? If, if you've got that error, that duplicated email, hey, there's a duplicate email, you can search by that email to see who else is tied to it. So that's where that comes in value. But you can change this around, but I always leave it on everything when I start typing and searching. And the cool thing about this is when you're on a team and you're searching for somebody, on Teams, you have a personal database and a team database. And I'm not gonna go down this rabbit hole too far, but you actually have two different databases. Everybody should be in your team database to get team functionality, but you might have somebody accidentally in your personal database, which is behind the team firewall. You don't see it. But if you search for somebody and you're not seeing them, it'll say this person exists, but they're over in the other database. So just something I wanted to share with you. All right, so next that is filters. So you can filter your database a lot of different ways. Right, I could say, hey, show me my leads only. Filt I could filter by tags, right? And we're gonna talk to tag creation here in a minute. Different tags that I have, right? Maybe it's buyer, seller. Okay, now I'm gonna set one up. Lead source, where do they come from? Show me people's birthdays, right? When did they last visit, primary address? A lot of different ways, last visited, last contact is cool, right? Show me everybody in my database I haven't contacted in the last 90 days. That's value for you, right? Because you know you're supposed to call everybody every 90 days in your database anyways, but you could actually set a filter for that to go in and take a look. 
I can also say branded to me, which is cool, yes or no. Branded to me means have they created an account through my website or my mobile app? We'll Talks a little bit more on consumer on Monday, but that's what branded to me means. Do they have my consumer device, website or app? And have they created an account, which I now identified to them as their realtor? So I'm just gonna go choose buyer here. I'm gonna click apply. Now it's gonna filter my database looking for buyer tags, okay? And they show up. So this is everybody marked as a buyer in my demo account. Now, I was showing you all those filters originally because it was looking at my all database. Right next to filters, it says smart view. You can create smart views, which are custom saved filters. Let's repeat that. Smart views are custom saved filters. So if there's any filter that you would build, that you think that you would use more than once, you can come in here, create smart view, name it whatever you want. In this case, it's buyers. Would you like this to be your default smart view? Now for me, I like having all contacts as my default smart view. If I had a team and I had a buyer's agent on my team, I might have a smart view that's set to the default for anybody that they haven't called in 90 days, right? That's something I might institute as a rainmaker on a team. Just a heads up. So you can change what your default view is once you have additional ones created. Save smart view. Okay, now when I save that smart view now, I can also go in and change those columns, right? Maybe I want to know when their birthday is. Maybe I bring that to the front, for whatever reason. Created, contacted, last visit, change that. I can have a custom view for each saved smart view. Right, so I created that first save changes on that homepage originally, that was for all contacts. When I create a specific filter and save smart view, I get to shuffle the deck again because I might look at things differently based off of what my filter was. And then same thing, when I do that, if I click save changes, this filter, and now I'll see this as a drop down. so I have all contacts and buyers, right? That's what I'm on now. If I toggle back to all contacts, this custom view looks. If I change and say, hey, you know what, show me my buyers, you see, because I'm your birthday over here, then that filter is different. So this kind of ties back to that full customization that command has available to you inside of the system. Jerry, how are we doing on questions? Well, I guess it would help if I actually turn my audio on. Um, I, I answered one a second ago in the chat. Um, somebody asked how you add a note to a contacts file. I, I wrote in there about how to add the note on their contact as well as to do it as a bulk note. Yeah, and, right, so you can check bulk note, that'll do that. We're gonna go into individual contacts here in a minute and we'll kind of, we'll walk through that. Before I do that, I wanna tie back to what I've been saying all along was tag creation, right? So under settings at the top, under settings, okay. Yesterday we covered over, we covered these yesterday. On the left-hand side are command settings for contacts. Okay, we see contact tags. So this is where your master list of contact tags are housed. You'll see your default ones that KW has provided for you already. Buyer, seller, past client, downline, vendor, allied resources, those would all be in here, okay? Then your additional ones would be in here. Like you see, I have like a and W, I've got B and E. Those are what I call daily two. Some of you may be familiar with the daily two call. So that's a filter way of organizing your database. But who am I going to call this week? So we'll systematically walk through your database. Okay. I'm calling my A's and W's in week one. I'm calling my B's and E's in week two. That way I systematically will call everybody. And I filter by those tags so I know who I'm supposed to call. And maybe I create a smart view around A and W, B and E, T and J. H and V. To create a tag, you've got the blue button in the upper right hand side. Right, and call it test, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And then you give it a color. I want you to get in the habit of giving everything colors. Now, colors may mean different things to different people. Right. Maybe all of your leads are blue, or maybe all of your leads are purple. Or maybe anybody that you went to high school with are red, whatever that looks like, that's okay. But I want you to get in the habit of using these colored ones versus the white one. Because KW uses the white one as a default for their custom created ones for you. 
And then when you migrate to teams, that's a whole nother element to it where we'll have what are called legacy tags. If you're merging data, legacy tags will always be in white. So you can end up with duplicates looking the same way. So I encourage you all to use colors in your tags. Now remember on the import form, we talked about creating your tags first. So I want you to give some thought. And if it's, um, there's a list, I talked about the A and W's, B and E's. Uh, your PC coach is probably having some floating around about how to filter your database through the daily twos. And uh, we could probably put that in the Facebook groups. I'll check a file. I know I have one somewhere to kind of say, here's all your tags that you could identify for daily too. So we could share that. Uh, Jerry, maybe remind me after to post that to the Facebook group, okay? Gotcha. All right. So this is how you create a tag. Very, very easy. But you'll also be able to tell, right, Do I already, does the tag already exist? Because you can search for it. So I, I use the Asper and the and because I know that all my daily twos, that's them right there. That had. So it's filtering, it's looking for a certain element. And because I use the and sign in all of them, then I know that they're all listed right there. Now, if I had done an A and W lowercase, then I would have duplicate text. So that's why I said it's important on your import form to be very purposeful and specific with your tags so that you don't end up duplicating things. Now, I will tell you in the future, they're going to add a column here that will have a little eye looking thing. And I don't know when, but I'm just going to share that someday this may show up for you. That actually will have an eye, which basically will identify all the people that have that tag. So there'll be a list. That's not there right now, but that's something that's in development. All right, I'm going to share one, one other thing with you before we jump into, and I got to pick up the pace and run a little bit behind, custom fields, which is also really, really important that I want you to build out before you start adding information. Custom fields. So I talked about all that default information that most CRM tools have that you should know about people. Well, we also know that when we start taking notes, we ask a lot of the same questions all the time of people. Do they have kids? Do they own or lease? What's their favorite pie? Who's their favorite superhero? Right? What's their favorite sports car? Whatever that is. You collect all kinds of information, but you ask people the same questions. And when you throw that all in the notes, it can be cumbersome to filter and search through that information, right? So if you use custom fields, and I know certain people or teams that actually have like, hey, here's what I ask all my new buyers, or this is what I ask all my, it's like your import form, right? Things I need to know. You can build on all those questions that will show up on those contact records for you to answer. So here's an example. Do they own or lease? This is something that I think everybody and every one of you should know about people in your database. I want you to create this. So if you click create custom field, type in do they own or lease, right? And then you have field type. This already exists, but I'm walking you through just so you know. I'll just kind of make that dash two. Field type, how do I want to put in my answer? Text field, area, I don't know the character difference between the two, I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody always asks. Uh, drop down, date, right? If the question was, do they have kids? That might be a text field answer or a checkbox, yes or no. And then the next thing, if you're doing kids, I like to do it in the order of, do they have kids, text box, and then I put a birthday line underneath it where I can actually put a date. So I can track them for each kid, put it in that order, right? I won't put Billy, Bobby, and Jenny, and then a date. I'll actually do Billy, date, Jenny, date, Colin, date. So they're in the order. So be systematized in the information that you're collecting. But for this particular example, do they enter least? I like to do a drop down. Again, organization repetition is key. If you have a text box and you just type owner lease, or sometimes you might type rent, you may vary in your answer. If you're consistent in your answer on the drop down, so I'll put own, add another one, lease, so that my answers are always the same. Now I have this make custom default. What does that mean? That means if I check make this a custom default, that it's going to show up on every individual contact record. If I don't make it a default, I'll be able to answer that question for some people, but I'll have to add it to the contact record. So that's the difference between default and add. And when we go through the contact records, you'll see that. But I think this is important that you guys know what questions you ask. And if you don't, and you're new, talk to your PC coaches. And I will tell you that these that I have on my list are ones that you should have. Name, birthday for kids, 
Do they own or lease? Maybe what type of home they have, right? It's all valuable information. Pie choice, okay, that's something that we use because we give away pies on Thanksgiving, but pies for me is not a default question because not everybody gets a pie from me. Right? Past clients, my top 100 maybe, some may prefer business to me, but not everybody in my database because I'll go broke. So that's the difference between a default question, which is do they own or do they lease, and pie, which is not a custom. So building these custom fields, I think is incredibly important for you when organizing your contacts. So we got 10 minutes left, I'll run a little bit long, but I wanted to cover these, this is important. Now we're gonna walk through the contact records so you can see where those are. And you can always play around with these and test them and delete them, right? Or you can edit them as you practice. So I'm gonna go back to the homepage and I'm gonna open up a contact record. So I've click add contact. So add contact is for adding an individual contact. Now you see that my contacts are having a little fun. Those were all peanut characters, right? I'm not sure if I missed the peanut character. Um, you know, we'll go with, I don't think she's there. Little redhead girl, I think she's missing because she actually doesn't have a name in peanuts. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. All right, now I could add a relationship to here, to her, right? Add relationship means, are they husband and wife? Are they significant? There's like a ton of options here. So right now, it will let you know that you have connectors inside your platform. In the future, you may see like a relationship tree inside a command, like this is where this will go. So it's important to add these connections. Spouse is probably the most common, maybe a child. If they're over 18, I will add a child as a separate contact record, right? Because at some point I expect to sell them a house. That's how I roll. If they're below 18, I'm just gonna add them to the contact record. All right, so let's just go ahead and say that Charlie and the little redhead girl are married. Now Charlie's an existing record, so it'll connect it to his record. If I had added a spouse and they weren't in my contacts, it would create a new contact record for that spouse as well. It won't duplicate any other information because everybody has to have a different email address, a different phone number, they work other places, but the connector will be in place. What is their primary email? Focus one in here. Okay, phone number, lead source type. This is cool. Like, where do they come from? We talked about that. There's a list. Where do they come from? Or select from contacts. Most people aren't aware that this is there. I can say that this contact came from Charlie. I can actually tag that referral source inside of my platform. Now, right now, it's just a connector. But in the future, I'll be able to say, show me everybody that has sent me a referral that their contacts are connected. Like that, that's gonna be really, really cool when I get that, right? Imagine everybody in your database connected through contact records because they were a referral from somebody else inside of my database. So right now I can't filter that way yet. In the future, I will be able to. Are they a lead? We, we identify what a lead was earlier. And add, if I click add in my sales panel, what's gonna happen is it's gonna open up an opportunity for me to start creating. That's what will happen here. Not gonna do that today. Tags, right? Uh, they would fall under B and E, right? Maybe they're a buyer, right? Different examples of what they might do. And then for you Buffini people, you might have an A, like maybe they're an A concept, A's, B's, and C's, top 100. Right. There's no limit to what your personal tag system might look like. I get that question all the time. Can you send me a list? The list is custom. I don't, I don't know your background. So you, you can really talk to other people, see what you like. But Buffini, A, B, and C is probably the most simplistic way to look at things in your database. Consistency is the most important thing when you're adding contacts to people. Next, add more information. Okay, Don't miss the ability to add more detail. How they like to be contacted. This is just a notification to you. This won't prevent them from receiving text or emails. Okay, so if I even say do not contact, it's not going to stop them from me adding an email or text message service to them. Okay, it's just a note to you. If they had other information, additional emails, additional phone numbers, I can add that here. The home address. 
Okay. Always choose the address from the drop down. Don't type it all the way out and hit enter because by choosing it from the drop down, it pit, uh, adds a pin to a Google map, which is important because when we talk about um, adding smart plans tomorrow, we're going to see how the monthly neighborhood nurture identifies based on the address to the neighborhoods that they live in. So you want to start typing in and select that address from the list. Okay. Adding social media profiles, right? If I click add a profile, and then you'll see that there's more here than there was initially in that spreadsheet. Snapchat is there, MySpace. Anybody still have a MySpace page? I can say I never had one. Some of you might still have them floating around out there. So you have additional abilities to add additional things here. I talked about the same as an address, right? Make sure you check this if that's your mailing address, because that's going to affect your mailing labels. That's an important one. About legal name. I might put that, I had it a little redhead girl, but her name may be Betsy Brown now or Betsy L. Brown. In the future, as we continue our mapping with DocuSign, legal name will apply to certain fields and contracts. So get in the habit of, of adding their legal name versus how what you might call them, right? My name is David, but everybody calls me Dave, right? So there's a difference in, in the, to those nicknames. Description, where you, know, you can add additional information that might be different than met open house, one, two, three, Main Street. I don't know. Birthdays, we covered the importance of home anniversaries. Home anniversary is important. You can't see it behind me, but Jason talks about the average life cycle for somebody in their home. Who knows what the average life cycle for somebody is in their home? Nancy, I saw your hand first. Hold your space bar down, share with us. I don't know how to do that. Um, I think it's five years, right? Three to seven years. Oh, three to seven. So okay. you were just right in the middle, you're good. Three to seven years, right? So do I need, do they, do they have to be my past client for me to add their home anniversary, home anniversary date? Yes or no? No. Who cares? I care if they bought for me, but if they didn't buy for me, but I know when they bought their house, then the timeline applies. I can start looking and understanding that, hey, they've been in the house five years now. I know life happens. It's a different conversation with somebody. So getting it from their conversation through conversations with them or cheat and get it from their tax records. However, you come across that information, but adding that home anniversary is important. So get as much information as you can. Talk about relationships. I added them as a spouse up top, but I could add additionals, right? Sons, daughters, business clients, parents, siblings, cousins, grandparents. I mean, there's, there's a lot of information in here, right? Partner and, and other. So you can start building that relationship tree into your contacts. Where do they work, right? So I can either choose from the dropdown or I can build a custom source, right? And then I go to custom. Customs where those questions that we created on those custom fields will live. Now you see I, the default is stamped as a default. Do they own or lease? They currently own. Awesome. Now I have additional fields and I'll see other questions that I've created. Do they have a child? Yep. Okay. And when is Spencer's birthday? That's how I do things in my database. And if they had another child, then I would go back and I would add name again and then birthday again. So I keep them in order versus just going put Spencer, right? Julia and Deborah. Whoever works for you, full customization, right? Create, and it'll save all this information. And now I will see little redhead girl show right up that she was created today. She's got all those tags. I'm gonna go into her contact record, right?
all that information is there. And you see that she's at 68% of that 100% health score that we talked about earlier, because I'm missing things, right? I don't have a social media page. There's different things that I was out there. Now, if I don't click on that, won't necessarily tell me <clears throat> what I'm missing, but you just need to know through the, hey, I've got some more things to add for her, right? That apply. Now, tomorrow in Smart Plans, we're gonna get a little bit more detail of this neighborhood nurture, but you see, because I tagged her home address, that it pinged it to a map and a neighborhood inside the system. Incredibly valuable for you. And you're gonna learn more about that tomorrow. You'll see that Charlie Brown is her spouse. Right? And that's a direct link to Charlie's there. If I had put her birthday, right? Or her social media page, that would be in here as well. I can edit by clicking the edit here and add more information to this particular contact. And I'm also missing her phone number, right? So that's 20%. I would be at 88% if I had her phone number here. I just didn't put one in. On the right-hand side of your contact card, and we'll get into more details, but here's that timeline where I can filter by activity that Michelle was asking about earlier that I can filter by different ways. However, I cannot delete activities or things that were done. It tracks everything. But I could change my view over what I'm seeing. I could change my date range or activity. Opportunities, we'll cover that on Thursday. Smart plans, we'll cover tomorrow. Tasks, do I need to call them, right? Is there something coming from a smart plan? Is there something I need to do that ties to my, to tell me that I need to do something for them? And because I have her tied to a smart plan, which we'll talk about as a trigger, it notifying me that I'm supposed to call her because that's step one of something I have set up on the back end. Notes or notes, okay? Save searches. And I'll just want to get through this and I'll, I'll address questions. Uh, create safe search. So safe search is like an MLS search, right? We'll talk about this a little bit more tomorrow, but an MLS search is what this is. Now it is not as detailed nor specific as the MLS. And we know how hyper our market is right now. I would still encourage you if that, if they are in that category of buy now, that I set them up in a search from the MLS. Our listing should update within 30 minutes. However, if they're that hot, I'm setting it up on an MLS search. This is for everybody else that's the looky loser of the world where I can go in and I can set up a search by neighborhood or I can set up a search by zip code. We'll cover that in a little bit more detail tomorrow. But I just want you to know that this is there. And what happens is they'll either A, receive an email when I finish configuring this and the email will tr be triggered by instantaneous, once a week, once a month, whatever, or no email and it just pushes to their cell phone or their website because they have an account with me. So play around with safe search, add yourself in there first, right? You should always be the first contact in your database so you can test this on yourself. Plus button down here in the mar at the bottom, calendar event. We don't have a fully integrated calendar yet, right? But if I click this, it'll actually open up my Gmail calendar to add something to do. Add a note, it's the same as up above. Add an activity. Did I do something? Did I call them? Did I text them outside of the system that I need to track? Right. David, do, yeah. Oh, sorry. While you're right there, that's literally where I need you to stay. Um, okay. Question came in a while ago and, and Michelle's been waiting because um, this is what she was looking for. Okay. In, in this activity area, that bottom one says quick note. That is a quick note that you can put that will leave uh, in your timeline just some type of activity that you did. That is not editable. She wanted to know the difference between that one and, and using the notes where it is editable, when would you use those? Can you provide some guidance uh, or, or thoughts on when you'd use one that's not editable versus a note that is editable? And so I would, and I'll be honest with you, I don't have as detailed a question or an answer you might be looking for. <laughs> Sorry, I own it. But if I would, I would look at it as something as simple, if I had to guess, there may be a character limit, but I'll tell you what, I'll look for verification. I'm going to write this down and try to get a better answer for you but other than Dave doesn't know. Yeah, I think most people would be using that quick one um, just when, when they're really on the fly uh, and, and have to get going. A lot of times when I'm doing calls, I will actually you know jot down a note or two on paper near me. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm done, I'll have this contact open while I'm doing the call. But then when I'm done, I'll come in and I'll actually write the note in my notes section that way it can be deleted or it can be edited later if need be. Awesome. 
that was the only other question we had in the chat as of right now. I'd answered a couple simple ones. Um, okay. Thank but you. That was the one only one left. Uh, still here. Awesome. So just as a reminder, so earlier I had clicked the uh, export mailing label. So when I click that, it generated that and now I have a red dot underneath the bell notification that tells me that that's completed. And if I click this tap download, I'll actually see that, ex that Excel export. All right, so if I come back to the contacts homepage, we covered a lot of bit of information. We're five minutes long. I got to, I'm long winded. I apologize. Uh, but I try to give you all the information that I can. Uh, I know some people have dropped off and that's okay. Um, now's the time where I would just say, hey, let's, um, if there's any questions or things you need to know, clarification purposes around this applet, things that maybe I didn't go into enough detail for you for or that you didn't ask in the chat room, now's the time. There was one that just popped on the chat about the videos. Are they going on YouTube and uh, and do you do other classes? Uh, yes, they'll be going on the regional uh, video page, I believe. Is that correct, David? Yeah, so um, there's a YouTube channel. And I also post the link when it's live, I'll post it here. And I will post the link inside the Facebook group. But if you go to YouTube and you search for KW, VA, WVA, Region 12. You'll see our Facebook group is here. You'll see the most recent video. So there's yesterday's video. And I so I put them in the category. So playlists are broken down by applet. So yesterday's was under setup, KW command setup. Today will be under command contacts, right? And they will be updated. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get notified every time I post a new training. Okay. I will also put them on the Facebook page. So if you search Facebook for, let me see if I just find it here. Right here, Facebook slash group slash kw.va.wva.tech. You can join our Facebook group. And I will also post the link there, just like you will see right here is yesterday's class, with a direct link to the video. Usually by the end of the day, <clears throat> certainly by the next morning is my, is my best practice. We will do these classes as per the flyer every day, Monday through Thursday at 10 o'clock on a rotational schedule. Orientation, contacts, smart plans, opportunities, consumer designs, campaigns, referrals. Start all over again on week three, we'll bounce back essentially to week one. Now, the third week of this month, we have family reunion, so there will be no training that week. If there's a holiday or, you know, it's a snow day, but I have power, so that's a good thing, and the trainings will go on. But typically, like major holidays, when we're closed, there won't be a training that day. So just whatever training that was scheduled on a Monday would be skipped. We're not going to shuffle the deck. So for whatever reason, we won't have a training on that day, then we'll, the next day will be the next live training. Is that clear for everybody? We good there? All right, so let me just see, make sure I covered everything on my slides. All right, covered all that. See, tags and custom fields. We covered everybody, right? Organize, custom fields, tags, right? Whatever, how to do all that. Filters, we covered the how to, to filter your custom columns, uh, your searches, your branded to you. Smart view, anything you look at more than once, we've covered that. Here's the calendar for future trainings, right? We'll keep posting that out throughout the market centers. Cover questions, anything else? We are done. Only eight minutes long, not terrible. I think you- uh, I answered questions about the teaching. Um, the last question that we got from Greg was, do you have slides on the Facebook page itself? These slides, no, I do want to go back and do them right now. I, I'm in the process of building up all of these slides. Um, and then I'll do my best to kind of get out the ones that you guys would like to see. Right now, it's about an 80 page slide deck because I'm building them all at once and then I'll break them apart. So right now, there's nothing that I can post yet, but it's my intention to maybe share some of this information. No, it is my intention to share this information with you guys once I get it all built. Uh, that's it for questions on the chat. Okay. Well, then I will see you all tomorrow when we take a dive into smart plans. 
So thanks for coming. And like I said, look for the, uh, the posted training here soon. Have a great day, everybody. Maybe go out and sled a little bit with your kids. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. We'll close oh, thanks, David. Take care, everybody. We'll, we'll finish up with some music here. I don't know what I have live, but we'll, 